Welcome to Rising Above It. I'm your host, Nancy Siegel. Today's show topic is about anger management, something that we can all relate to. Uh, perhaps you've experienced times when you've been slightly angered or had your blood pressure shoot out of the sky and your heart racing and you're shaking and you find yourself out of control with fits of anger. Well, we've all been there and uh, today we have a special guest who is going to share his knowledge and information with us to manage anger. So uh, before we begin, I'd like to share a published study statistic and uh, this study found that men and women of normal blood pressure who were chronically angered had two times the chances of having heart disease and three times as likely to have a heart attack. So that's the impact of anger and it, how it has uh, an impact on us. So let's begin. I'd like to introduce my special guest, Michael Singer. Michael, welcome. Thank you. Uh, Michael is a healing science practitioner, a minister, a licensed massage therapist, as well as a father of two lovely, beautiful children. So, Michael, welcome, and thank you, thank you for being here. So tell us about yourself, Michael. Who is Michael Singer? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a question that I've been looking at and working on pretty heavily for the last 20 years, finding out who I am not who I thought I was, who other people told me I was, and discovering the real essence of Michael. Okay. And who is Michael? <laughs> who is Michael? I'm still working on that <laughs> at some level. Uh, I do healing energy work. Uh, it's my passion to be with people on deep levels. And when people usually ask what I do, I'm a father. It's my first and foremost love of my life is, is taking care of my two children. Mm -hmm. Great. And uh, how long have you been on your spiritual path? I would say seriously for the last 20, 21 years now is when I started looking and working on who I was. And Was there a specific incident that you could share with us that led you to this new journey? Well, I think it was a combination of I was doing well. I had three houses. I was making money. I was working at a job I liked, a girlfriend or two here and there, and I really just wasn't happy. It was just something missing, and I didn't know what it was. I just knew I felt unfulfilled, I felt empty, and I just started looking for what was next in my life. Okay. And uh, you are a spiritual counselor? Yes. And what is a spiritual counselor Well, versus a uh, regular counselor? A regular counselor. Yeah. When I sit with somebody, I am able to pick up on, there's, there's a field of energy around a person. It's called an auric field. And... I'm able to tune into that and their energy and what's going on, and I'm just guided. It just, information comes to me that I just share with people. I have the gift of, if something's stopping them or blocking them, I can see it. I can usually trace it back to their childhood or something. I've given information on ways that we can work with it, we can change it. I can have them lay on the table, do some healing work where we work and we're moving and clearing out the field and centering them and releasing them what stops them. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you must have had training with this, <laughs> so um, it can, because anybody can call themselves a healer, and I run into that before. And uh, so, what makes you real and unique and uh, authentic? Uh, I've run into people who just said I do healing and energy work, <laughs> and I don't like the term, but I call them new age airy fairy. Okay, it's like you look at them. Who dressed you in the morning? It's <laughs> like you're gonna help me. <laughs> Uh, I started my training back in 96 with Barbara Brennan. Actually, she, her name is Dr. Barbara Brennan. She has a book, Hands of Light and Light Emerging. She has a PhD. She worked for NASA. And she had gifts and abilities that she didn't understand, so she did a lot of research and finding out how and why and was able to put it down in paper. And she has a year. It's a four-year healing school, and I've spent six years at the healing school, and I've taken many courses. I did one last week, and I'm always learning, growing, and moving on. So it's a structured healing or learning environment. Yes. Uh, that, uh, it's literally why she calls it a science. There's literally a science to it. If I look at somebody, I work with somebody, there's this particular wounding or something. It's, I'm not just sitting there trying different things, trying to make up. There's 
proven methods that I can work with in clearing out the field and working with. Okay. And so, so what does hands-on healing mean? Well, for me, it's, it's the hands-on healing is where you lay on the table and I put my hands on you. You lay on a massage table fully clothed mm -hmm. and I do a little praying and I ground and I open for guidance, ask for guidance and I hold on to and I can tune into your energy field. So I'm doing hands-on. It's light, gentle touching. It's, you know, working above the body. So it's not just healing where I'm just sitting there, oh, you're being healed. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, part but of my how training... Do, how do you know that it's working? when it's happening? I can tune in. I can feel, literally feel somebody's energy field mm -hmm. and I can see on some level how it looks, what's going on. I can feel when it calms down. I'm just guided to put my hand in different places and I follow that. Okay. And you're, you've been trained specially for that. Yeah. I've, that's why I call myself certified. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> of some sort, right? <laughs> yeah. I got an actual <laughs> diploma on the okay. wall. <laughs> So let's address today's subject, anger. Okay. And uh, so, does everyone have anger? Yes. Okay. It's as simple as that. At, at, we all have it. How we deal with it and how we handle it is unique to the person, but mm -hmm. everybody gets angry. It's part of the normal human emotion. And is anger, can it be healthy for somebody? It can be if you learn yeah. to express it properly in appropriate manner. Mm -hmm. And, and what, at what point does it become unhealthy? Where you do physical damage to somebody else, where you take it internally and shove it, not express it, uh, and you don't move the energy, it becomes blocked inside your, your body, your DNA, your field. Mm -hmm. Okay, and how do people express their anger? In what, what, what ways, like diff the different ways? That some people expensive. drink a lot. Some people overeat, some people use sexuality, some people uh, get aggressive with people, some people, there's so many different ways as unique as the person, because usually what most people do is a combination of those. It's not just, I go yell and scream at somebody. So they might be passive aggressive, they might shove it and go home and eat something. Okay. You know, or they can't sleep, or you know, their jaw is locked up and they're walking around, I'm not angry, their shoulders so are like this. So it shows physically. Oh so yeah. Uh, uh, my next question was, uh, when people do get angry, what happens to them physiologically? Well, you can see it in the body. I mean, people like this, the jaw gets locked up. I find chest because your heart hurts. Mm -hmm. If they shove it into the stomach, they have, they'll come to me, they have a lot of stomach problems or mm -hmm. issues with their digestion. Because we hold the emotions in our stomach. Yes. Uh, if we relate to uh, emotions and parts of the body, it's usually the stomach. If you don't feels. move it appropriately, it gets locked in. Mm -hmm. it, and the, after years and years and years, it's like, why is my shoulder hurting all the mm -hmm. time? You know, why do I have stomach problems? Why do I have yeah, you know, when heart I attacks? With, yeah, when, when I work with hypnotherapy clients, they often, you know, they have physical ailments someplace that when we tune into it, it's actually uh, some type of stuck emotion. And uh, it's, it's the way the body tells us we have uh, pain that we're not addressing. And when it's usually emotional pain. In my training, the first thing that Barbara talks about in the book is pain is your first sign of guidance. Your body is telling you something's wrong. And usually what happens is if we have a pain, especially doing massage for 20 years, it hurts, it hurts, it hurts. After a while, it hurts so long, you don't even notice it. It literally disappears. Mm -hmm. And somebody comes along and touches a point and goes, ow, you're hurting me. And what I'm doing is just bringing back the consciousness to the pain that you've had for a long time that, mm -hmm. that's still there. Okay. And are, are men and women, men or women, more prone to anger? Yes. <laughs> 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 Both are right. Both, yes. <laughs> and um, do you feel that they're like one has uh, the upper hand on the expressing the the, langer, the the level of anger? Well, in my observation, I th find men will get more aggressive. They will exp they'll physically do something. They might abuse somebody. Mm -hmm. They might drink more. There's different ways of expressing it. Or and and I haven't have scientific proof, but in my observation. I find women will stuff it more. Mm -hmm. Not that men don't, but because men are not supposed to show their feelings, so that's just part of them. Mm -hmm. But I find a lot of women will make themselves wrong easier. Okay. And, and that's just sometimes how, like we're, we're kind of wired. Men are wired differently than women. Yeah. Our, our hormones 
have an effect. Testosterone, it's testosterone yeah, for especially when it kicks in. Yeah. You know, you and hit PMS puberty. For women. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a great combination. <laughs> Let's have a relationship. <laughs> <laughs> So, in just a moment, we're going to share the three tips to manage uh, anger. And uh, but before we do, uh, I'd like to know or t for you to share how sarcasm affects those who say it, and for those around around others. Well, speaking from someone who used to be extremely sarcastic, it's a literally it's a way of attacking somebody sideways instead of expressing you hurt my feelings or this or that. You might come back and just say something, well, I don't like this or that. It's just literally you're expressing it like in a non-direct way. But is it always, um, the sarcasm, is it always directed to that, per that person, say, person themselves? Or is it just their anger um, coming through no, for another problem? Because like often I can, yeah. like people just walk around and they're sarcastic all the time. They're angry. There's yeah. a lot of anger. But you could have this morning someone cut me off on the way to work and mm -hmm. I'm angry. And mm -hmm. so when I come home to my beautiful loving wife, mm -hmm. that stinking meal, who taught you to cook that? Your mother? <laughs> you know, it's like, so it still hasn't right. been moved. It's blocked energy. So it comes mm -hmm. up. And I find a lot of people who are very nice, sweet people all of a sudden will like almost blow up. They mm -hmm. get angry and they're, they don't even, well, like, why did, where did that come from? It's been repressed mm -hmm. and it, passive aggressive on some level. Yes, okay. And uh, when someone has an anger issue, now there's things you do and then there's some things that you don't do or you should avoid. And yes. what are those things uh, well, that people should avoid that when they have an anger issue? You never hit. Don't, you don't hit anything. Animals, people, there's no, you know, you don't, going out and getting drunk is not going to help. or Self-destructive Self-destructive eating, you know, mm -hmm watching TV for hours, you know, doing all sorts of things that really don't move your forward. Mm -hmm. Anything that the, will... The anger also um, is, w once it gets suppressed in the body too, it not only shows up as pain, but also as depression, correct? Yeah. It's, it's, it's like a great defor uh, anxiety and depression. It's, it's, it's not moving blocked energy is really mm -hmm. what it comes down to. So you, you depress it. Mm -hmm. You depress it, you depress your anger, because most of us are brought up, that's not nice, you mm -hmm. don't do that. You know, as a child, mm -hmm. you don't express that, and we, we were never taught to, and me, you know, most, I'm not saying everybody, but most people, to express it, you know, I'm really mad, what you did just really hurt my feelings. Yeah, we're not taught to do that. No, we're taught <laughs> to, to lash out. You, <laughs> 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 yes, and, 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 and then, you know, they're an idiot, and why do I hang right. out with them and then make them wrong? And it, the exactly. truth was, you know, they just said something that was hurtful, and you didn't express it. Mm -hmm. oh, or road rage is one thing. It's like, you know, how, many, how often do we have somebody cutting, cutting us off? And most of the time, people are just innocent about, about it. They didn't intentionally make us angry. No. <laughs> but we, did, but but you, we, react, we something. Re, re, react that way. We, and it, couldn't, it could be something that happened earlier. Mm -hmm. It could be literally, any, it could be weeks, months, years it happened. And it just kicks in. And before you know it, you're like, Rawr! and you literally, you, you mm -hmm. can see someone shaking, their jaw going. It's right. Just, and they're just haven't learned to express it healthy. Okay. So let's go to the top three tips to manage anger. If we can get those up on the screen. So the t tip number one to manage your anger is to move yourself. Move the energy. Mm -hmm. For me, if I get angry and I could feel it coming on because I notice my jaw or my back or my shoulders, I feel it physically, I will move. I, one of the best things I love, I love old rock and roll. I'll put it on, crank up the music. If the kids are there, I'll have them dance with me because they'll get me going. Go out, go for a walk, go mm -hmm. to the beach, just move. Move, don't lock yourself down. And move if, the energy. And also if you're driving, Scream. Yeah, oh, yes. There's <laughs> Scream or sing to the radio. Many times people pulled it next to me and I'm ah, They're like, guys nuts, then they move over. But it's, I just move the energy. Right. It's just, you know. And you feel better afterwards. I, you do. It's cathartic. It mm -hmm. really helps because yeah. it's releasing what naturally needs to be released. Okay. And let's move to tip number two. And that is journaling and writing. I, it's one of the things I recommend with most of my clients. It's, there's a way of moving energy and it's almost private. So I recommend first thing in the morning, what I do is at nighttime. I've had a day a lot. If I just start writing, it starts moving energy. And you know, some of my journals might be literally 
I'm going to kill Bill sort of stuff. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to be nice. <laughs> you know, it's, instead of taking my baseball bat to his head, mm -hmm. he really pissed me off on this. I want to dig a hole. You know, it's expressing. It's moving block energy. And it's, it's subtle. It's small. But it's actually, over time, if you journal on a regular basis, you will notice emotions and things come up that when you write them, you go, wow, where did that come from? Because you're moving the energy. Mm -hmm. And it can be done where... Even if you're married or relationship, the other partner is not part of it. It can be something private where you can do it. Mm -hmm. Very good. Okay, tip number three is to reach out. Reach is, is extremely important. Reach out to someone you feel safe with. It could be a friend. Uh, it's someone you can go to and say, look, I'm really angry. This person pissed me off. I just need to talk about it. Uh, it could be a therapist. I have people come to me to move that. I started doing this work 20 years ago, and every two to three weeks, I still work with somebody. So somebody can see what's going on. I can express my feelings. And as an outside observer, they can witness me and say, well, what about so-and-so? Because when we try to work on ourselves, I mean, it's like we have blinders. We see Can't this. see the forest for the trees. Yeah, you just, you're looking this way. And if I'm, when I'm working with somebody or someone's working with, you know, the person I work with, they're like, what about this? What about that? And you're like, oh, I didn't even think about that. Mm -hmm. I literally don't believe we can do it on our own. We can't. You can't Not read books. Can. Yeah. You can't take seminars. Seminars help. Mm -hmm. I mean, I do workshops and stuff, so that'll help. But you can't do this. You can't become what we call enlightened, lighten up the load without working with somebody I consider just a little further down the path. Mm -hmm. My, who I work with is a teacher from the school. She's been doing this forever. I can sit and be with her and express, and she says, but what about this and that? And she can see, well, I see you block the energy here, and it goes sideways, and what goes on? And, and like, oh, this is an opportunity for me to change, mm -hmm. because I'm literally having somebody witness me. Okay. And that's, that's one of the three it, things I'm trained in, is the first thing you start doing is you start witnessing yourself, observing. It's like remove yourself and say, man, look at him, and it's without judgment. Mm -hmm. It's witnessing. He's really angry. He's going through, or, you know, you're going through this. Yeah, and but watching see, you yourself. Don't want, yeah, you don't want to beat yourself up no. while you're doing that. No, when you're you witnessing, just wanna... you're just observing. It's like there's a cup here, this, and you're just saying what's so. Mm -hmm. And then there's, there's three people. The second one that I use is the asker. How do you feel? Well, my jaw's tensed. What's going on? My shoulders. I'm getting a tightness. So you're asking yourself here how do you feel. I'm not trying to change it, I'm just trying to observe. Oh, my jaw, I'm really, I'm getting a headache, I'm getting, so I'm doing it. And then, you know, and then the witness, you know, you're just witnessing and working with all three. It's like, okay, this is the way I feel, this is what's going on. And you and allow. how are you going to resolve it? Yeah, well, it's just, be, uh, the yeah. first step is being with yourself. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, and then what's the experience of it, you know? So you sit and you work with those three levels. Now, now besides working with yourself, um, do you, you work with clients and, um, like, tell us a story about. Uh, well, I had I had a young lady. I'd say just the other day she came in. She's very sweet. She's very kind. She has a big heart. I like working with her. And she talked about she just left a job, and because the boss fired her and the boss this and that. And she was sitting there talking about anger. It was just so nice and sweet. And I really and I said, you get upset? Well, yeah, da da. da. And it, she was so under her head about it, she didn't move and express the anger. I work with bioenergetic, core energetics. There's a lot of different modalities I use. So I had her stand up. I, we put on gloves and we take a tennis racket. And I had her start moving and just started yelling at the boss. And she says, "I feel she, stupid." So she was taking the tennis racket and hitting the, hitting the hit, massage table. She wasn't hitting you. No, no, you're not, not allowed. No violence. <laughs> That's a good thing. You're not allowed to hit me or hurt yourself or the room. There's three okay. rules with that. Okay. But she just started moving the energy, and she thought this is stupid. It's not going to. But she started moving the energy, and I just said, "Say his name. Say." screw you or did it and she started moving it and before it, her anger literally came up and she was wailing it and there's a technique of bending over and finding the vibration but when she was done and sat down mm -hmm. she was so present she was there i mean it was like a different person that walked and in the room she moved the anger she and moved she, the energy how did she feel afterwards how did she she felt great she was so thrilled she felt lighter mm -hmm. she says oh my god i didn't even know this was weighing me down so much because i just took it in stride yeah, she just so she was suppressing it. Yeah, she pressed, and, and I just had her, exp I mean, it's one of many, there's many modalities of moving, and I mm -hmm. just, part of my gift is I can tune in and know what's, what different people need. I can literally see it. If you have an issue going on, a lot of times I can trace it back to your childhood. Okay, which I want to get to is, okay. um, 
I know about, uh, as, as we've spoken before, uh, the wounded child. Um, can I explain what wounding is, being wounded is? Can I say a little bit bigger story? Sure. See, my, uh, be my, yeah. Yeah, my belief is, uh, and I hate it because it's like when people tell me I choose my parents, I want to strangle them. But my belief is we choose our parents this lifetime. And between conception and age eight or nine, our parents wound us and they hurt us, they do something. For some, it could be a look. I mean, it's just a nasty look. For others, it's physical, mental, it could be sexual, it could be a, a, shut up, don't do that, you can't. They shut us down, they block our natural Even form. the nicest parents. The nicest, it's sweetest it's person. because we are human. We are. It's this way that we're built. They didn't, so. yeah, they, they, they are human, they have stuff going on. I love my kids, am I gonna make it, you know, have I wounded them? I have no doubt. They're 20 years old. And, <laughs> Dad, you did this. I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. It'll but catch it, up. It'll catch up. So part of my training is there's uh, there's five different character structures. It's it's through uh, core therapy and bioenergetics, and they're, they're Freudian terms. Okay. But the first one is uh, it's, it's called uh, schizoid. So between conception and the time you're born. That they have a schizoid wounding in, in utero, and right after they're born, they don't want to incarnate. They don't want to be here. It's uncomfortable. They're, you know, they came in, maybe there was a lot of fighting and yelling when they were inside. And when they came out, it just wasn't warm and welcoming, or these big bright mm -hmm. lights or something. So they're, they're, they're called schizoid. They have a body type, of usually tall and thin. And if you look at them, they, there's like no one home sometimes. Mm -hmm. So if they get angry or something's going on, they just leave their body. It's like you're talking to somebody, nobody's home. You're talking to the wall. Yeah, it is. You can, you know, we you all really have. check out. Yes, yeah. we all have parts of these components. Okay, so, so everybody it's not, does. Not a, you're not cubby-holed, pigeon-holed no, into but usually one. there's one that's larger. Okay. You know, when I started school, we, yeah, we would write, okay, I'm 40% this, 20%, <laughs> I don't, I, and when you're done with school, you laugh, oh, God. <laughs> so the next one is usually right after being bored to age two or so, and these are approximates, and it's called orality. That's the oral winding. Okay. It's not being breastfed. It's not being getting enough. It's not receiving. So somebody's oral, you look at somebody and they like suck energy and they want mm -hmm. from you and Those they're pulling. Those are the vampire, uh, yeah. ener energy vampires, they suck the light. Yeah, they, they, weren't, they weren't filled as a child, so they're still trying to do it. So there's a lot of anger because I need, I want, and so it's suppressed anger. Okay. So if you look at them, sometimes they're concaved. You can look at the body type and see it. Mm -hmm. The next is usually from two, two or three till about four or five in there, and it's called masochistic. And that's somebody who's been invaded by the parent. I mean, it's like, eat now, go poop now, do this now. You draw a picture of a, a cat and they say, oh, it's a dog. I mean, there's no sense of, of boundaries for you because they've been invaded constantly. Usually those people are a little overweight. It's a way the, of protecting. Uh, abusers, like abused? Well, they're the one, the people pleaser. Okay. They're going to do, they're very nice, they're very sweet. You know, mm -hmm. how can I do? You know, because they want to please you, but when they get angry, They've never been taught to express it or contain it because they were never allowed to. Is they have no walls. There's nothing okay. protecting them. So that's the way they go on that. Okay. Uh, the next okay. is from three, four to like five, six. These are all approximate. Mm -hmm. It's called psychopathic. Psychopathic. <laughs> I have a lot of that. <laughs> so. I, know, I know a lot of those. <laughs> it's. Uh, Someone, it's usually seduction from the parents. It's someone who the parent cross lines with them. So what they want to do is be in control all the time. They want to run things. A lot of psychopathics run corporations. They do, they have a very clear mind on how things should be done. But they don't express anything because it's, all right, this is the proper way. This is the way we should do it. Here's how. Now, I want to make clear that the, this psychopathic... Uh, wounding? Wounding is different than... Psychopathic. Yeah, it's not the Freudian term. Okay. It's the terms I was taught I through core energetics clear. and bioenergetics. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's not that. Because it's not someone who goes out, you know, yeah. and yeah, it's totally whacked. Yeah. Just partially. Okay. Okay. And then uh, the next wound is usually four, five, six, till about seven or eight. And uh, their, their, their wounding is rigid. Okay. It's literally, they didn't get enough attention. They didn't, their parents didn't give them what they want. So they got to do everything perfect. I'm going to be the prettiest. I'm going to dress right. I'm going to keep my room clean. I'm going to be straight A's. I'm going to be perfect, so perfect that they won't get hit or I won't this. They don't learn to express their anger or any of their emotions because they're being perfect. I mean, it's mm -hmm. just, I mean, all these woundings have positive things that move them forward in life, but they also have negative parts that 
still run their parts of their life right now. Okay. And, um, and, and so what are the three main things that, that people as human beings, what do they want? What are their my, wants? My belief, is, as my philosophy has come up, is really basic. We all want to be loved. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants to be loved. I agree. It's as simple as that. We want to be held. Mm -hmm. We want to just be held. I mean, and it's just, there's, especially being a massage therapist, there's such fear with people of even being touched. Mm -hmm. And for me, it took me years and years, because I was always the holder, to allow somebody to hold me so I could fall apart, so I can. So it took me a long time through my childhood, through my wounding. So we all want to be loved. We want to be held. Mm -hmm. And the last is, is just as basic. We want to be seen and heard. We want to express ourselves. We want to say how we feel. We want to be able to bring our creativity, our beauty, our joy, our heart, and bring it out there. And most of the time as a child, it's like, no, it's your bedtime. Go do this. I don't have time. I got to do this. The parent is. So, you know, it's just three basic things of humanity. Mm -hmm. it just, and it, I have to agree with what you just said yeah. because um, those are all three fundamental things that we all need as human beings and are so important, yet a lot of us are unable to express love or accept love or um, accept being touched or in a, in a appropriate, yes. yeah, in an appropriate way. And then and to be heard, you know, one of the reasons why I'm doing this is because I wasn't heard when I was sick having the, while I had the mercury poisoning, uh, I, I was not heard by the medical You went to a lot of people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just, yeah, right. And, and just Here, take this, number. honey. Come back later. Right. Yes. Yeah, so, okay. So we only have about a, a minute left here. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, you do um, healing sessions. Yeah, I do. Tell uh, us about that. I do a, a few different things. I do energy work. Uh, I do reading. Some people come to me just to see what's going on what's blocking them, what's stopping them in their lives. Uh, I do spiritual counseling where I sit and I, I literally just channel information. I do hands-on healing. So, so a lot of times they'll get counseling. They'll get a combination of the three, put them on the table and do, I mean, you've had some of my work. So yes. you, you know, you I know. I've experienced it and what, it's wonderful. And uh, I felt very clear afterwards and uh, a lot more balanced and uh, that heaviness that maybe when I was when I would come to you and uh, before the session I'd feel like a sense of heaviness of the issue that I was addressing and afterwards I can attest that it was gone and um, and all I did was lay on the table and you we moved your magic. We moved. <laughs> <laughs> well me and I have a little help. <laughs> we, we moved stuck energy. This yeah. is what we did. Yeah. Right. Uh, before we go uh, we're just um, going to uh, the three tips again for people with anger management. Call me, call me, call me. <laughs> Santa Barbara Healer. Santa Barbara.